Hey guys, what's going on? It's that home theater dude. Got a brand new episode for you today. As you can see, I have been gone for about three weeks, so I'm sorry about that. I've been, you know, busy with school, busy with finals. I had a, a national boards I had to take care of. So I mean, it's it's just been a busy last three weeks, and to be honest, a lot of it's a blur. So I'm gonna hop back into these videos. I have the Epson 5040UB mounted, and then I also have the Optima UHD 65 for projector people. I actually got to send this thing back like ASAP. So I'm gonna go ahead and um, get this review out because I wanna compare the two just really quick. As you can see in front of you, there's a little bit of a change to the home theater. I have the SI Solo Pro screen. And instead of having it in my second home theater, I decided to put it down here because I think it would get the best, um, it would give the best comparison between the two um, whenever you have both of them shining on the same screen. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, play a couple scenes from this one. This is gonna be, wait. Avengers Infinity War. Um, this one came out last week on 4K Blue or well, 4K Ultra HD or whatever it is. And I kept saying whenever I was watching it that this was probably the best that I have ever seen anything look in my in my house. So uh, I figured it'd be a great demo to do between the two to to talk about the pros and cons. So <laughs> if you give me a minute, I'll go ahead and get everything lined up for you. Okay. Okay, so just like that we're done this is still the image of the optima i filmed this one last so between the two i wanted to do one scene that was you know with the lights on and i want to do one scene with the lights off so just real quick I, I just wanted to say whenever i was watching that um with the optima it was very noticeable that you can see these horizontal lines on the screen and i'm pretty sure i talked about this in a previous video that uh i i think it's just something the camera's picking up because you can't see that at all uh with, with the naked eye so i mean like if, if you watch my previous video, I kind of get the camera and I rotate it back and forth and you can still see the lines on the exact horizontal plane. So um, that has nothing to do with any of the projectors. I'm pretty sure that's just something that the, the, that the, the camera is actually just picking up. So uh, overall, between these two, I'm pretty impressed uh, between the Epson and the Optima. They're both, uh, I think to be honest, they're both exactly the same price. Um, their, their specs are very similar. And I think you get a slight uh, increase in contrast ratio with the Optima versus the Epson by uh, almost a quarter of a million. But um, overall brightness, I would say, I'm gonna go ahead and talk about a couple things. I'm gonna talk about brightness, and I'm gonna talk about um, overall picture quality, and then I'm gonna talk about uh, clarity. And then um, if you guys wanna 
talk to me about anything else. Um, I, I, I have a pretty good scope of what went on in the video. So if you guys want to, you know, shoot me a question in the comments, I should be able to answer that. But just first and foremost, um, if you're looking at the two, I'm not sure if the camera picked this up or not, but overall brightness, I would give that to the Epson 100%. The, the, the picture quality or the actual brightness between the scenes, which is the, you know, the dynamic contrast ratio or the HDR, the high dynamic ratio, whatever it is, um, I, would, I would give that to the Epson. But it looks like colors, if they're bright or dark, they look really good on the Optima itself. So brightness, I would give that to the Epson. Colors, I, maybe I might give that slight edge to the, the Optima. And then uh, let's see, clarity. I would say that uh, between the two, they're both really good. If you want, if, if you want a dedicated home theater, I would go with the, the Epson because it looks a little more cinematic. Um, if you're coming from a TV and you just want this as like your general use projector, I'd probably say go with the Optima because it has a really good motion flow. So like I said, between the, the Epson doesn't have anything that has motion processing and the Optima does. So it has a little bit of that motion flow. So if you're used to a Sony or one of those LGs that people just have like motion flow like on, on blast, this is very subtle and it makes it look really good. So I would probably go with Optima if you just want this as your general use projector, you know, just as a day in, day out. Um, but if you if, if you were just really like the best in performance that you can get, then I would probably <laughs> once again give it with the uh, or, or go with the Epson. Last thing I'm gonna talk about is overall picture quality, and that's the tough thing because a lot of like these things have a lot of going for them in a lot of directions. So I would say that um, I would say overall picture quality. The 4K just looks a little better on the Epson, and there's nothing wrong with the Optima itself. I mean, like, me giving pros and cons towards each different brand individually, it's not saying that one's better than the other 100%. There's great things out there for both of these, so if you want to pick up either of these, you're not going to be disappointed at all. Um, and then we'll talk about just the general aesthetic behind the two casings in individually. Epson seems like a little more of a professional type of setup. And I mean, it, it goes along with its electronic um, features like lens memory, lens shift. The actual casing itself is a little, it's, it's actually a lot better. It's, uh, it, it doesn't seem cheap or flimsy or anything like that. You get to the Optima, it is a really good projector. Like I, like I keep saying, like I, I don't wanna keep, I don't, I don't wanna bash the Optima. It's just they're two different soups. I mean, they're, they're two different recipes. I mean, for, for pretty much the, the, the same end product. So the Optima comes with kind of like a cheaper plastic casing. And it's not just me that says that pretty much anyone that you talk to between the two that we're gonna be talking about Epson or Optima, you will get the same type of feed out. And uh, to be honest, if you're gonna be paying close to uh, 2,500 bucks for this uh, 4K projector, um, the I'm, I'm not looking at the casing every single day and if, obviously if you have it mounted, it's not a big deal. But I mean, aesthetically, it, it, it's just not, um, <laughs> I don't like it, so I mean, I'll, that's that's all I'm gonna say about that. And let's see here, the features on it. If you want, um, you know, just general use, 120 inch screen or you know, 100 inch screen, whatever it is. If you're gonna be using a normal projector setup as 16 by 9 content, the Optima is a pretty good choice because you get, you know, a great detail. You get the motion flow and you get all the other stuff, and um, you get a lot general general use, uh, general purpose use out of it. I would say then go with the Optima. But if, if like, look at this right now, if you look at the screen, this is a 16 by nine inch screen, right? Or 16 by nine aspect ratio screen. So you have the black bars at the top and bottom. So this is a 120 inch screen and you'll probably be getting like uh, close to maybe 96 ish. If you look at the vertical or the, you know, the, the horizontal distance from edge to edge. So, I mean, you're not getting everything that you want out of it, right? But if you're gonna be watching like TV and things like that, um, just general purpose use, this is a great projector. Now, if you want, uh, you know, if, if movies matter to you more than actual just watching TV, then you wanna fill up the entire screen. Um, since this is a 16 by nine inch, or 16 by nine aspect ratio screen, see right here, boop, boop, up to the top and bottom. Um, you're not, if, if, if you're gonna go ahead and stretch it out to where it fills up the entire screen, you're gonna need a different aspect ratio and if you want to swap between the two on the fly, um, it, I would give that clear winner to Epson because obviously you can do that. You can't do that with the Optima. The only other way you can do it is if you, um, there's this little feature on it that's kind of cool. You could do this thing called, uh, let's go to aspect ratio. They have this thing that's called letterbox, which helps out a lot and you don't really lose much, but it kind of looks funny. 
because look how elongated um, Thanos' face looks. It just it doesn't necessarily look natural. So um, you have super wide, but when you get into that, you start cutting out you know the sides, as you can see over there, that it's getting cut out. So um, whatever's important to you is you know obviously whatever you're gonna go with. But I mean, between the two, I think you get a lot more functions, like uh, you get a lot more functions with the actual Optima. There's a ton more settings that you can uh, manipulate and whatnot. And um, a lot of this will, I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and say between the two, like they're all in the same factory settings. None of these are calibrated. So this concludes comparison between the Optima UHD 65 and the Epson 5040UB. Um, they are very, very close. Um, picture quality, um, I mean, brightness, there's a slight difference. I would give the upper hand Epson, but I mean, that withstanding, pretty much everything across the board, uh, the, the specs don't lie on these things. Like they're very close, they're very similar, and it's very cool to have both of these in the same uh, house, in the same room, in the same screen, because um, they cost, they're, the, the price on them is very, very similar, and these things are so tightly matched that um, for the general purpose consumer, they're not really gonna no notice the difference. But if someone that's super hardcore and super critical and they really want to get everything dialed in, then that's when you actually start noticing uh, a, a, a bigger type of difference. But to be honest, uh, it, it all boils down to what's important to you from, from your, your actual home theater and your, your setting. If you want it uh, for general purpose use, I would go ahead and give the upper hand to the Optima. And uh, so say like you're just jumping into, um, you know, you're jumping from a TV to a projector, this is a really good choice. Um, but if you know you want you want to go for something that's going to be a more of a dedicated home theater room or even not I mean, I use mine as my just general purpose um, Projector here in the, in the house and then you know, you can go with the Epson 5040 UB um, Like I said, these things are very similar. I keep repeating myself over and over again So I'm gonna go ahead and end this video here if you guys like this stuff um, Just go ahead and uh, leave a like subscribe and like I said, I have links for all this stuff in the description. Um, big shout out to uh, projector people for actually letting me do this. They actually sent the, the Optima 54, or we, the Optima UHD 65 over. They actually let me keep it for an extended period of time. Now the time's over, so I, you know, I gotta send it back. But big shout out to those guys, really appreciate it. Couldn't have done this video without you guys. Um, and that's it, I'm gonna go ahead and check you guys next time. All right, peace out.